The FBI probe into Brett Kavanaugh could be finished in a matter of hours. The Bureau expected to wrap things up as early as today. Sources telling Fox News a single copy of the report will be sent to Capitol Hill and the White House to read, and then it's going to be kept in a safe in the <laughs> Senate Judiciary Committee. This all comes as Senator Chuck Grassley is demanding answers to stunning new allegations that contradict Christine Blasey Ford's testimony. An ex-boyfriend claims Ford helped a friend prep for a polygraph test, contradicting her Senate testimony. Have you ever had discussions with anyone uh, besides your attorneys on how to take a polygraph? Never. And I don't just mean countermeasures, but I mean just any sort of tips or anything like that. No. Have you ever given tips or advice to somebody who is looking to take a polygraph test? Never. Now, Ford's friend is denying being helped for a lie detector test. Meantime, President Trump isn't backing down from defending Kavanaugh from Democratic attacks. He's swinging back harder than ever. They've been trying to destroy Judge Kavanaugh since the very first second he was announced. So many different charges. Guilty until proven innocent. That's very dangerous for our country. And a man's life is in tatters. A man's life is shattered. They destroy people. They want to destroy people. These are really evil people. And after the bombshell story about Kavanaugh throwing ice cubes at a bar, the New York Times is out with another decades-old report about the Supreme Court nominee. The Times printing what appears to be a sarcastic letter from Kavanaugh preparing for Beach Week in the summer of 1983, where he warns about him and his friends being loud and getting drunk. All right, Greg, this, I guess this is a sworn statement by the ex-boyfriend of Ford, and it's riddled with bombshells here, never brought up anything about Kavanaugh, never his name, never brought up about being sexually abused. He witnessed her prepping this friend of hers, Monica, for a polygraph exam. She flew in planes all the time, not afraid of small spaces. And when he caught her cheating, he, she ended up keeping his credit card and then spending lavishly on it, then lied about it afterwards, and then once it was said that he was going to press charges, then she owned up to it. Now, the, you know what's the, the, the key thing to take from this is that two can play at this game in the court of public opinion, okay? We've sat here and watched uncorroborated accusations, so it's now the pendulum is swinging back, and there happens to be information out there. Uh, that the media is saying that Trump's comments about Ford were a uh, mockery or an attack are the same media who thought Matt Damon's ridicule of Kavanaugh was sparkling and brilliant <laughs> and daring, and yet they find that Trump said something yesterday, and they called it mockery or an attack, when all he did was point out a discrepancy. What Trump did, if that was a, an attack to you, then you really do live in a bubble, because if you go home, to, or you go to a bar, or you talk to somebody at the gym, what Trump said is exactly the opinions of everybody at home going, some of her stuff has holes in it. The stuff about having one drink, but not knowing she only had one drink, but not remembering everything else. The common sense of his, uh, of, of the, of the uh, what would you call the rally Trump, the common sense of the rally Trump reflects most of America. And he's revealing the contrast of the public and private expression about this case. That so many people publicly will say, she's credible and compelling. But then they go home and they go, dude, <laughs> she's not making sense on a lot of it. So he's, remember he said at the beginning, compelling. But then when he gets to rally Trump, he becomes like everybody else. And he says, you know what? She's there's some no, incredible yes, things. When, you come, when it, you come to rally yeah. Trump, what he does is he feeds red meat to the red base. No, that's and this, that, and you or go, America. And you are going to go after the press. The media yep. is doing this. Let me just tell you, Greg, pick up the paper. You'll see that people like Susan Collins are saying this is plain wrong. Because they're scared you see that people like of Greg, the media. Let me finish for a second. Okay? Well, you interrupted me. I did not. <laughs> I respond to you. I'm saying, and you hear Lindsey Graham say, well, there may be some holes, but you know what, Mr. President, knock it off. This They're is wrong. not helpful. They're and wrong. let me tell you something, Greg. This kind of going after someone, when they give you a, a burying their soul yeah, about yeah. It, something that has traumatized Like Kavanaugh. Them, is not 
helpful. That women get a message from this that they are being told shut up. Women that actually agreed people, with Trump at that no, rally. Oh yeah, at that they, rally. no, they applauded. How about yeah? So how about when the Catholic Church abuses people and the power structure ignores them and protects the priests? What about the Catholic? Oh, what about a young woman? What, 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 what about the Duke? Women? What, 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 what about the Duke like Cross case? You can do that all day. It's just like those women at the elevator. They go to the elevator of Jeff Flake, and if you support Brett Kavanaugh, you're not listening to me. Well, you know what? If you were molested, and we now know there's Soros-funded people, if you were molested, go after the guy who molested you. I Don't know. assume that Brett Kavanaugh should carry the burden for everyone who has suffered, every woman, from sexual abuse that or harassment. That is not what we're talking about, Judge. Even the, the, Jeff Flake said what Trump did last night, no time, no place for remarks like that because it is insulting. And the lawyer for Ford said, this is why women don't come forward. This is why you don't tell oh. your dad, don't tell your mom. You no. feel he brought shame. up a simple you discrepancy. Let's right. talk you brought about up a simple you know, discrepancy. Sarah, Sa hold on. Sarah Sanders was asked about this today at the briefing. Let's hear what she had to say. It wasn't anything other than the president stating facts. In fact, facts that were laid out in uh, the prosecutor's memo that she put forward to the Senate. I think it is absolutely disgraceful what they've done and exploited this process. They exploited Dr. Ford. They're exploiting all of the women that have come out to make any type of accusation. This isn't the process that should have been done, and certainly everybody deserves to be heard, but that includes Judge Kavanaugh. Well, I just got a fresh text from Mom, and <laughs> I'm going to have to go to you. She, Mom okay. says, I sincerely hope that Dana establishes the tone tonight regarding attacking the victim. So here you go, Dana. Well, the thing is... Um, I was, it was interesting. I think Sarah Sanders, um, she represents her boss well, right? She's, she's been yeah. in a position. Yeah. Nobody talks like Trump. Right. Nobody can out-Trump Trump. So okay. you're the press secretary, and you, she's, I think she did her best there in trying to say, this is what he was trying to say. What President Trump was saying was basically reading from the transcript of the hearing. Mm. But it's a tone. Like your mom says, me, for me to set the tone? <laughs> right. yes. So the president has a tone that does sound like he is going after you. That's like for me, like, you know, I hate the nicknames. Like, I'm, but I get it that they work and that, and that they're very effective. I do, though, wonder about the strategy later on because Flake, Murkowski, Collins, they're sincerely polite. Mm -hmm. Like, they would never say this kind of thing. And so now they're already under a ton of pressure. They're waiting for this FBI report. The president needs their votes. And I just think, like, from a strategy standpoint, do you, do you get the country with you and lose those three votes and then end up winning in 2020 because people are so mad? Or do those people, those senators, wait for the FBI report if it's clean that they would have no reason not to vote for him? if the FBI report comes back uh, and it's it, but, fine. But, but I really believe, Dana, that, that Donald Trump always has both situations covered. He's got the public situation yeah. covered and the political, and that's why he plays to his base, and then he also is trying to leverage however way he can with these senators. Flake initially well, said I think yes, that he'll end and up then with, he said maybe. I think that even if he loses a Flake, for example, right, right. does he pick up a mansion? Does he pick up somebody else along the way, mm -hmm. McCaskill, somebody like and that? I don't think that, already said no. I don't think what we country. saw at the rally last night, that was not mocking Trump. No. We've all seen Trump mocking, yeah, that and it's, that's, it's, that, that was, was very nothing. light and, mocking, and again, if anything. Two can play at this game. Right. We've seen the media uh, put their spotlights on Avenetti and questionable clients uh, and let it ride. And, and so then, then you have Trump just bring up a simple discrepancy and you call that like attacking? It give me a attack. break. I'll give you a break. That was attacking. Oh, and I'll tell you something. You are else. a snowflake. This is, okay, so in other words, every woman in America who's gone She's through not every sexual woman. assault, oh, yeah. they're all snowflakes. Why don't you just shut up, you know, move on? No, nothing to see here. This That's to not me, what it is. This to me is also part of the issue with the FBI. Mm -hmm. Because right now, remember, the president said he found Ford credible. That's the president's <laughs> language. That's polite. And then he comes now, and instead now he changes his tune because he wants to play to you, Greg, and oh, your no, ilk, no. tribalism. Juan, Juan, if you're Republican, Juan, if you're Republican, Juan, you're Republican you've got to back down. Don't Juan. smear Every me. woman in America who has been a victim of a sexual assault remembers more than Christine Blasey Ford. I know. And the, I know. I did this for 30 years. Fine, I prosecuted but I'm just saying, you cases. think you're speaking to I every do, woman. No, oh. no. What I'm telling
telling you is that for you to say that because Donald Trump is pointing out inconsistencies in her own testimony that he's suggesting to other women who've been victimized that, hey, look, we're not going to believe you is absolutely not the case. Oh. The women who've been victimized are asking the same questions. Why do I remember when I was raped? Oh, Why do okay, I right. remember who Let was me tell you what's Why I do know. I remember who here's the first I, person was I, I spoke with? Most you women know? who were victimized don't even report it because no they fear kidding. this kind they of fear Donald they Trump. Fear this? That tells them no. to what shut up. What they fear is not the president this, of the United States in the politics. No, what is, they fear right. is the abuser. How about, how about a sham uh, investigation abuser. in which you don't interview the victim?